Morning. Morning. And do we have a nice crowd today? Hey, Alex. Um, before we take up offerings, I just wanted God to just close your eyes. What I was hearing God during this entire worship was God was saying, breathe, breathe, breathe. Um, if you can close your eyes for a moment, just take a big inhale. Lord, breathe into those lungs. Breathe into our bodies. Breathe into our minds. Breathe into our circumstance. Breathe over us, Lord. And cleanse us with your breath. Bring life to the areas of our life that needs life. And the areas of our life that should bleed, which is commanded to go right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for breathing into us in Jesus' name. So it's time for offerings. Thank you, everyone, that's been supporting us. Uh, we, we just love sowing into amazing people. Nicole and Albina are in the house, and they're just... Such a blessing. We went out and we had some Turkish food last night. There's a Turkish restaurant. We should all try it one day. It's, it was amazing. We, we just, um, it's amazing the people that God's brought through this house. Uh, God's brought some amazing, powerful people that bring presence. And I would say these two bring the most joy. Um, they're just so real. They're so down to earth and so lovely. Um, and Olivia and I were just so excited to, to be hosting them, not only in the church, but in the home as well. And, and they just, you know, one of the words that we gave that God released on for 2020 was sanctification. These wow. two are very, very sanctified people. They spent tw over 25 years ministering all over the world. They, they're, they're from Bulgaria. They're currently in Pennsylvania, and they're about to move to Florida. But they, they, they were just sharing that they had they have a network of like 60 churches in the U.S. that they minister at all, all, all year long. It's amazing. It's just what God's doing in these people's lives and, and the fact that, that we have such amazing, amazing man and amazing woman here that, that just carry God's presence so well. Um, I really felt like I wanted to spend some time just honoring y'all and what we're going to do. Our church doesn't know this yet, but what we're going to do once we're done with the once you're done ministering, we're all going to lay hands and, and prophetically speak over the two y'all and see what else God has, yeah. impart things into y'all, and then uh, and then and bring some clarity. What I was seeing was also earlier the breathing exercise we were just doing. God showed me there was a dust storm, and a lot of us have been the year started. He's bringing in a move. You know, when a new season happens, there's a wind, a fresh wind that comes in. But it was bringing up a lot of the dust from the old season. And God said, there are some people who, who's, who's been gasping for air. And God's been breathed, God breathed a new, new, a, a new breath into each of our hearts. Um, he's revitalizing the, the areas and promises that he's made. I believe there was a lot of promises made in last February. Some in this house... Some of y'all receive from other people. Some of y'all receive from prophetic voices online. There's, if y'all track your prophetic words, turn back to February of, of 2019. Those prophetic words are going to come to life in, in February of 2020. Amen. But just around the corner. There's some amazing things. So if you can go through and, and, and if you, you document your, your prophetic words, go back to February of 20, 2019. Because you're going to see those things come to pass in, in February of 2020. Um, there's, there's, I think we talked about how there was a pressure building up in the last quarter. I think that pressure has been released. And it's an instant feeling. It's, it's like a balloon popping. Suddenly new things are happening where we're, we're, we're allowed to, to, to enjoy a, a greater atmosphere of heaven this year. And so in this, in this quarter, as you... As you praising you, worship me, spend your time in reading the word. Don't only be fed at this house. Be diligent in feeding yourselves Amen. and reading God's word. Amen. Um, if you want to figure out what to read, I'm talking about God's written word, not, not books. Like I wrote, I wrote a book. Great. I really appreciate y'all reading my book, but that's not God's word. Um, I'm talking about God's written word, the Bible. And, uh, and it's just seeking to see what the Lord is saying to you through his word. Yeah. Um, I, th I believe that part of the sanctification that's going to happen this, this year is, is from us being diligent in reading, us being diligent in studying, us being diligent in applying the word over us. And when you're reading, one thing that we heard Bill Johnson say that made perfect sense to me, you read until revelation hits and you, and you stop. And, you, and, you, and it says in, the, in a lot of Bibles will say, Selah, like meditate on this word. Mm -hmm. Allow that word to come to life inside of you. 
and, and wash over your circumstance, wash over your mind, allow the, the, the reading of the word to renew your mind. I believe there's some new stuff happening, and, and I really believe that we need to be diligent this season in reading the word. Um, in reading the word, we're, we'll be less likely to be deceived. Y'all get me? Because the word Amen. is infallible. Amen. And, and the, the enemy is trying to deceive, and even the elect will be deceived, it says in the Bible. And so therefore, we must be diligent in filling ourselves with the truth. So if deception is released, whether it's purposefully or by accident, something inside of us, the Holy Spirit inside of us, instantly says, no, that's not true. So be diligent in reading the word. But these two... Man, you know, when we first met these two, it was years ago. It was our, our friend Ray and Sue Yackel's church. Ray's going to be speaking here on March 29th. And, Le uh, and then we have Scott Windham on February 2nd. But we were at Ray and Sue's church, and these two came in. And it was, I can tell you that every time they, they enter our city's limits, there's, there's, there's an electrifying atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, during worship, I said, what is that feeling? Is that a quaking? Is that a shaking? God said, no, it's electric. Uh, their ministry is called Mega Joy. And uh, I was at Friday morning, I woke up, and I was telling Olivia, I was like, man, I am so excited about the Dimitro's coming. And Olivia goes, me too. <laughs> it's because, because you, it's when, 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 there's, when there's, there's electricity, electricity brings a charge. So when, you're, when he's ministering, they're ministering today, we see that charge. You know, when our heart begins to beat funky, uh, the doctors will put a charge to it to, to recalibrate it. Yeah. And there's a recalibration that's going to happen today when he's preaching. Amen. There's a recalibration that's going to happen, that's happening in this room. There's, 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 there's electricity and static in the atmosphere. And get ready to be charged. All right. <laughs> um, I'm excited. I'm ready to be charged. So, Mitko. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, thank you, Jonathan and Olivia, for just embracing us with such a great passion and love and appreciation. And thank you all for this great privilege and honor this morning to be trusted with this platform. And, uh, be able to share the gospel with you. God's power and the salvation. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Amen. Thank you, guys. You're you so amazing, so awesome. We love Texas, and we love this city, and we love you, and uh, we are preaching and ministering unto you, not from knowledge and big head, but from love and a big heart. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Well, uh, it was a powerful praise and worship time. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Wow. Yeah. That recharging, you know, that yeah. restoration and calibration really started with the praise and worship. And uh, uh, before anything else, I just, I think I have two, two words to share, like a prophetic impartation. And the first one is about uh, the Holy Spirit, pretty much in line with what Jonathan said about uh, uh, breathing and you know the, the, the spirit of the Lord in the Bible is compared to a breath mm -hmm. the, the breath of God yes. the Ruach of God mm -hmm. and that's how our new life started by God breathing into uh, Adam's body and corpse the, and nostrils yeah uh, the breath of life and he became a, a new creation he became a living soul and I really believe God is constantly imparting into us through the Holy Spirit the power of new life and it reminded me this morning uh, about Samson and it, it's uh, one of the most uh, amazing uh, how to say manifestations of the power of God in the Old Testament why? because uh, he did and performed such a heroic acts, which uh, no human creature ever. Well, let's say uh, Joshua commanded the sun to stop. Okay, no one can be that. I, I totally <laughs> understand. But I'm talking about what a person can perform in his own body. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and Samson 
uh, manifested that power of God which can be uh, accomplished through, through, through man's ability and body and he carried that, that power. And uh, so many things like he would destroy thousands of Philistines and uh, he would destroy and, and, and just uh, get rid of uh, uh, being, uh, uh, you know, uh, put in ropes and, and tighten uh, with ropes. And uh, the Bible says, uh, although these were new ropes, they became like, like a, you know, like ash <laughs> when he uh, just uh, uh, tried to get rid of them. Boom, he, 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 he got delivered like he was nothing upon himself. But do you remember once he took the, the city gates? He was uh, uh, encaptured in the city and uh, at the, 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 the midst of the night he wanted to go out and they, they, they tried to keep him in the city to, in purpose to destroy him. But the Bible says he broke out through the gates of the city and those were not like our bathroom doors, okay? Yeah. These were solid, heavy, uh, iron was put on them to prevent the enemy to, to enter into the city when they are closed. And he took these gates with the two pillars, you know, and, and, and brought them uh, up to a hill and delivered them as a trophy, which is... Totally amazing. That that that's a freak of nature and also supernatural. No one can can do anything like that. But my point is this: he was victorious over the challenges in his life and over the world uh, as long as the power of the Holy Spirit was coming on him. Because every time he would do and perform something heroic, the Bible says, "And the Spirit of the Lord." calm upon Samson with power and he that's why he was able to perform and to do such a heroic act and I was like until I mean you don't need now don't get me wrong I, I go to the gym and I try to eat healthy but when it comes to accomplish something supernatural you don't need to go I, I mean Samson didn't need to go to a gym to have an energy drink or to use any mean from this world so he may overcome the world. Amen? All he needed was the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon him. And, you know, we try to, to, to do the best to keep ourselves in a good shape. But when it comes for overcoming the world, all we need is the power of the Holy Spirit. And my prayer this morning for you is to... Help say to remain dependent on that kind of ability to walk in the supernatural life, you know, in the Lord, uh, 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 empowered uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the same with Jesus. Jesus was born of God. He was innocent. He had nothing to do with the sinful nature inherited by Adam. But the Bible says when he started his ministry. He opened the scrolls and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do. And it's a long list of things, you know, and to accomplish all, all these things by the power of the Spirit of the Lord. So my prayer this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. let that breath of the Holy One continue to fill our spiritual nature and learn so it is the essence of our new life. And we declare that as long as we stay under the power and the anointing, dependent on that anointing, we will be invincible. And we will be a mighty overcomers over this world in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. I just want to mention a little bit about our products. I'm not uh, trying to be commercial, okay? Uh, I don't like being commercial and uh, uh, the purpose for th this recommendation is on your behalf because uh, the, the, the God has given the fivefold ministry on behalf of the body of Christ. So uh, through, through the fivefold ministry like pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, prophets, you know, he may uh, uh, impart that, that spiritual growth to the body of Christ to to, to, to grow unto all the fullness of God. 
and I have some good stuff. Uh, it is all based on the revelation. It's not my personal understanding, but the revelation God has given me all these years, of which I am so thankful and grateful. And uh, I want you to, to recommend this morning this book I, I wrote years ago. It's called Glory and Beauty. And it's about, uh, let me put it in this way. God created the world uh, in the time frame of six days. But when he called Moses on the mountain of, uh, uh, to, to reveal to him how to, to build the tabernacle, it took 40 days. Imagine the whole world with its glory, beauty, animals, creatures, creation, it took, took six days. For the tabernacle, it took the Lord 40 days to, to present that plan of the tabernacle to Moses. Because I believe this greater glory, because all the tabernacle represents the plan of our salvation in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And I think there is a greater glory revealed in what Christ has accomplished for us, you know, uh, on the cross and in his resurrection, than all the glory found in the whole creation, you know, in the world, as, as much as beautiful it is, you know. So this book is about the tabernacle and the glory and the beauty revealed in the, 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 the ministry of the high priest and his uh, apparel. Uh, every small, every little detail of those things, you know, as types and shadows uh, by revelation is revealed in this book and uh, what it speaks about, like the pomegranates, for example, you know, this beautiful uh, uh, fruit, amazing fruit, you know, hanging on the, the, the end of the rope of the high priest. He had bells and pomegranates and you go like, why not figs? Why not mangoes why pomegranates because there is a secret message you know embedded into these types and shadows for us to teach us something so this book uh, reveals a lot and we have uh, flash drives we are also trying to get contemporary you know no more C we still have cds but most of the new cars they have this plug for, for flash drives so we have five teachings on every flash drive with different series and topics like this one is glory, we have joy, we have what, what else? Identity. identity. Yeah, identity. And these are powerful teachings, you know, so you may enjoy them and uh, just uh, while you drive or whatever. I really believe those cannot be consumed and you cannot get bored of them from time to time you go again and because it's God's revelation, you know. It constantly bringing new stuff. And just to mention that if someone wants to partner with us, traveling all over the world and in the United States, and uh, uh, I really believe this nation still needs missionaries. You have sent missionaries all over the world. Now this nation is reaping, you know, what it, it has sown. And I am one of them, praise God, <laughs> coming in the United States just to strengthen and to lift up like Moses holding the rod on the mountain top, you know, and his hands dropping down and those two people supporting him. And the Bible says, until his hands were lifted up, the Israel over, overcame the battle in the, in the valley. And I really believe we are here to strengthen, to lift you up and to encourage every one of you guys, you know, that you are amazing nation chosen by God to influence the world. Only two nations, Israel and the United States, believe it or not. Those are the two nations chosen by, by God still in this day, in this, in this, this time, you know, to influence the world in such a great way. Amen. Amen. And uh, we appreciate you. We love you. We bless you. And we are here. So if someone wants, we, we don't need much money or if you give much, it's, it's okay. But sometimes it's just $25 per month, you know, 20 or whatever, you know, it makes big difference because together we accomplish much and yeah, there are a lot of things explained in the brochure if you're interested in my wife, I'll be on a kid. Amen. Praise God. I'm done with that. Thank you, Lord, for the teaching this morning. I want to share with you and teach on worship. Okay. And uh, I don't know, are you surprised or not? But uh, I was surprised 
when God revealed a new perspective uh, to me on, on worship. Because usually we think worship is uh, something like a, uh, a entree, you know, like an introduction, like something we do beside the, the, the main dish, the main part, and, and just a doorway to, 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 the, to the essence, to the substance. But actually, <laughs> I think worship is the most important, most valuable part of uh, our Christian life and the highest manifestation of our salvation. The, the highest form, of the manifestation of our salvation. And as all of you know, that when we go to heaven, in heaven actually, in that dimension, in that realm, we will enter into the fulfillment of our hope, expectations, and uh, the finalization of our salvation. And most of all, what we're going to be involved with and in will be worshiping what God has done and accomplished for us. So it starts right here, right now. Uh, in our spirit and I want to teach on that this morning and just give you a new perspective which will really 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 strengthen your lives and will make you a greater overcomers over all your challenges and limitations amen so uh, I want to start with the scripture um, actually I'm, I don't know where is that scripture you know, because I know it in my mind. But uh, it's a famous story, so you are very well familiar, and I really believe you're going to trust me with that. <laughs> okay, you can find the, the verses, yeah. Uh, there is a story in the Bible, in, in the Gospels, uh, about Jesus healing ten lepers. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that story? Okay, so the first thing which amazes me that uh, uh, Jesus is my champion. I mean, he is so amazing. Sometimes we struggle so much with uh, one particular sickness or whatever to overcome. Imagine Jesus with one word. He made 10 people at once, all of them, being healed, restored, and delivered from that terrible, deadly disease. And, and, and... The story goes like 10 lepers met Jesus and they stood uh, from afar and they asked Jesus for mercy and grace and just to be uh, cleansed by the leprosy. And Jesus goes like with one word, go show yourselves to the priest. And then the, the Bible continues and goes like, and on the way to, to, to the temple service, on the way to the priest, all of them got healed. All of them got cleansed. But one of them, the Bible says, when he saw that he got clean, clean, cleansed and, 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 and just restored, the Bible says he turned back, came back to Jesus. This time, he's not standing from afar. Now he is totally clean. There is nothing to prevent him to have fellowship and contact with Jesus. And he prostrated himself at the feet of Jesus and started worshiping and thanking him. And then Jesus says, uh, were not uh, all of them, I mean the rest of them healed. Why only one return to give glory to the Lord? Actually, all of them were healed. And Jesus expected all of them to come back and to give glory to the Lord. Otherwise, he would never say anything like that. But there was only one. So there is a, no, there is a, a, a key phrase in that scripture which can show us why only one came back to him. Because the Bible says, when he saw, when he saw what? That he was clean, cleansed and, 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 and restored, immediately something took place in his heart and he decided to go back. I mean, he saw what God did for him. The other ones were consumed and totally overwhelmed by what they had to do for the Lord. You know, because he sent them with a task. Go <coughs> show yourself to the priest. Okay? So I really believe 
this key phrase is given to us to show us what made this guy particularly to go back to Jesus and to worship. It was based and founded upon what he saw that the Lord had done for him. The other ones were still overwhelmed and focused on their performance, on their uh, 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 duty to go to the temple, to perform, to do, and to show themselves to the priest. And this is a turning point in our lives. If you stay focused, listen to this, if you, if you stay focused on and, 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 and gazing upon the revelation of what God has accomplished for you already and what He has done for you already, you will become a worshiper as a natural result of that it will make you to worship Him. If you stay focused on what you have to do and what you have performed for Him, you will never become a true worshiper. So that's, that's the turning point. Worshiping brings victory in your life. I want to speak about that, you know, because it, 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 it's so amazing. I mean, God will show you new things which you have never seen before this morning. Thank you, Lord. And uh, uh, the problem with us sometimes, very often, is that we tend to, to be more concentrated on what the enemy has done, what other people has done to us, what circumstance, circumstances has brought into our life, but not that much on what God has done for us. You see, if you stay overwhelmed and focused on what, you know, some people live in bitterness and unforgiveness. Why? Because they are focused on, one, on what some people in their lives, you know, done wrong with them. Okay, and they are overwhelmed by that. But if you stay focused on the Lord, how great is His forgiveness for you? How great is His compassion, His care and His love about you? You will become a worshiper and you will be able to overcome those things in your life because uh, the Bible says, and forgive others the same way God has already forgiven you all of your trespasses and sins. You get overwhelmed by God's great goodness, glory and mercy and that empowers you, you know, to overcome the challenges and actually worship is the greatest victory uh, in your life because through worship you receive empowerment from everything God has given, God has accomplished on your behalf through His death and resurrection on the cross. Amen. Amen. And uh, Amen. I saw a prophet that there is a prophetic uh, aspect in worship of which I want to talk this morning, which I've never seen before. That there is a prophetic aspect in worship. When we worship God, we open a door for the prophetic power, you know, to take place in our lives in an amazing way. And uh, do you remember the story uh, in Second Chronicles chapter 20, 21, 22, that King Jehoshaphat was his kingdom was surrounded, this is 2 Chronicles 20, 21, what I'm going to read from, but uh, a great army of enemies surrounded Judah, and uh, it was so uh, vastly spread over the land that they saw with their natural eyes that there is no ability to stand, there is no ability to defend uh, against them, you know, to do anything. They were uh, totally, how to say, unable to resist the power of the enemy. Then King Jehoshaphat turns to the Lord and asks for help. And uh, then he gathered all the Judah in one place and they, they stand before the presence of God and they pray and, and, and they ask for help. And then the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the present people who was a prophet who was a descendant 
of uh, uh, Asaph. Do you know Asaph was a singer and a prophet and a minister in the tabernacle of David? Mm -hmm. So this guy who prophesied at that time was like the fifth generation, you know, uh, certified, qualified, authorized prophet. If, because imagine one man prophesies tomorrow, you don't have to fight in this battle, you don't have to do anything but go meet them at that specific place and God will fight for you and God will help you. Isn't that kind of insanity, you know? Like going without uh, any weapon, anything like that, God will take care. How can you trust one man? Today someone speaks in your life and you need the confirmation, after confirmation, uh, you, you don't trust in that way. How they uh, were able to trust one man <laughs> of things which, uh, you know, sounded crazy, you know, because he was a fifth generation, generation after generation, God was proving himself faithful, mighty and powerful in the family of these prophets. So when this guy prophesied, they knew that he's uh, trustworthy, okay? And whatever was pro proceeded out of his mouth is trustworthy and there was no doubt about it. Wow! Amazing. So next day they go and all of them together, they, 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 they're going to face their enemies, <laughs> that, that huge and great army. And listen what the Bible says. When he had consulted, uh, King Jehoshaphat consulted with the people, he appointed singers to sing to the Lord and praise him in their holy priestly garments. As they went out before the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord for His mercy and loving kindness endure forever. This is the Amplified Version, by the way. And when, and when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were self slaughter all of them Ooh, my goodness have you ever seen anything like that it is just amazing because the bible says at the moment not before that at the moment they started manifesting praise and worship and thanking the lord and lifting up his mercy his goodness and his grace which endures forever then the lord started acting that's why i'm telling you there is a, a a prophetic power in our worship because when we worship the lord we we uh we allow prophetically the power of the finished work of christ and what the lord has already accomplished and done for us you know to to enter into our life and to start manifesting and we are totally disarming and disabling the enemy to continue uh, to 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 uh how to say uh to act or just to to mess or just to uh enter into our life for for bringing the deception bringing all kind of uh, stupid things you know which are totally, how to say, uh, uh, cut it off. They don't have power, they don't have authority, you know. The only way they can have access is by uh, being disturbed in our natural minds and allowing them to be more focused on them than what He has done for us. And when we start praising and worshiping the beauty of His majesty, His holiness, His glory, his power we start prophesying of what he has already done in our lives and and our mind and natural mind and our hearts and everything start being aligned together with the spiritual reality and our life you know the, these frequencies of heaven of his glory and beauty they enter and we get we start mirroring actually and echoing that glory and that majesty and everything he has accomplished in his victory and it starts manifesting in our natural realm. And that's how we overcome, by praising, by worshiping, and by just uh, declaring what has been already done. You see that, that leper 
who came back to Jesus, he came on the, on the foundation, on the base of what God did for him. He saw, he, he was overwhelmed by, 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 by what the power and the love of God accomplished in his life. That's what made him an, a, a worshiper. The other ones were also cleansed, but they were not overwhelmed by what the Lord did for them. They were overwhelmed and focused on what they had to do for him. And that's a wrong foundation for building up a Christian life. A Christian life is not that much consumed of what you are appointed to do for him, but what he has done for you and how to give place and how to manifest and open a door for that constant flow of God's goodness and grace into your life so you may put on all the benefits and all the great accomplishments of Jesus' victory to be manifested on the surface of your life. And, and worship is the door. Worship. Smith Wigglesworth, you know, he had a secret, definitely, because he was so unique, so powerful, so amazing, you know, and we know that he was not a, just a normal minister of the gospel. He was so powerful, and people often wonder what was the secret of his power. You know, one of the things everyone uh, who is writing about Smith Wigglesworth would mention is that the way he would start his day. Okay, so he will get early in the morning, and the first thing, <laughs> imagine this like almost 80 years old man, and the first thing he would do in the morning. He will start running as a kid, you know, as a child, running around his house from room to room, jumping, praising and worshiping God. How privileged he is to be his child, uh, giving praises and worship to all the, 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 the glory and the majesty and the beautiful things he is privileged with, you know, being a believer, born again, believer and, and a child of God. And that, that's the way he, he would start uh, uh, the beginning of, of every day by praise and worship. Now, if you lay uh, 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 if you lay a foundation like that, you know, for your day, I, I really believe the enemy won't be able to take much place in your natural mind because your mind is totally focused on the greatness of God. You won't pay attention, you know, to whatever is surrounding you as we sing. It may, as we sing this song, it may look like I am surrounded, but I am surrounded by you. Actually, dear word, two realities, one in the same uh, time, simultaneously. If you remember the story of Prophet Elisha and his servant, the armies of the enemy surrounded them. Now the servant goes out and he sees what is in the natural. Then he runs back. Alas, my master, we are done, we, we are finished, we are rested, we are going to be, uh, you know, uh, attacked by the enemies, they, 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 they are uh, all over, all around us. And then Elisha, you know, God goes like, oh, Father, he didn't say, Father, oh, mighty God, or something like that, just open his eyes, open his eyes so he may see immediately. God intervened, opened the eyes of the, 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 the servant, the, the spiritual eyes, and now he sees that the hill around them, all around them, is filled with uh, the armies and the hosts of, of Jehovah and uh, angel, uh, uh, an, an, angelic beings of another dimension and horses and fire all together mingled. Isn't that an amazing, terrifying picture? Mm -hmm. And then he sees that they are positioned in the inner circle and the outer circle is the army but actually they are surrounded by the army of the Lord and I really believe it's a great picture of our spirit and our natural mind the natural mind is the servant and the spirit is the master and the, the spirit is always related to the power of the prophetic you know seeing things and declaring things which are beyond what our natural abilities and eyes can see in our five senses but through the word of god into the power of the holy spirit we open this natural realm for the manifestation of the supernatural and then our natural mind who is supposed to be the servant serving us not we serving our natural understanding and mind as the bible says don't lean on your own understanding in everything 
recognize the Lord as leading power of knowledge and understanding and everything. And that's a beautiful story, you know, and that's how we fight our battles, amen? So uh, uh, with King Jehoshaphat now, we, we see that when they started praising and worshiping wow. what God is capable of, how he reigns over his nation of Israel, and all these things, you know, immediately the enemy was disabled, and the Bible says God appointed ambushes, and they destroyed each other. They, they just couldn't withstand the power of the uh, 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 the worship and the praise which was found in the midst of that nation and that's our lives mm -hmm. that, that that's our life when when we start praising and worshiping we don't give place to the devil because we're commanded by Paul and by the apostles in, in, in the New Testament don't give place to the enemy don't give place to the devil but resist him so where we give him uh, how can you give place to the devil in your life you know, by fear, for example. So fear and worship, they don't go together very well. <laughs> I mean, they don't go together. When you worship, you cast out spirit of fear away from, from the regions of your inheritance. Amen? Mm -hmm. or, or, or anxiety. Don't worry for anything. Don't be anxious. It's a commandment. Don't be anxious for nothing. But in everything, give praise to the Father who is taking good care of you and who has already, uh, you know, been there, done that, and provided for you the answer. Praise God. So that's the way uh, sometimes we're giving place to, to, to the enemy by, by worrying, by being overwhelmed by, by, by the, the five senses, you know, diagnosis or symptoms or whatever. But when you start... Whoosh, Oh, thank you, Lord. When you start praising and worshiping, you start exercising the power of the new creation which is in you, which sees things beyond this natural realm. And then you're starting establishing the finished work of Christ Jesus, you know, in your life of what He has done for you, like, 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 like this leper. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So uh, let me read something. Before, uh, usually we, we tend to, to think in that way. Before God uh, to do anything for me, I have to do great things to Him or for Him in order to get approval. But the truth actually is God is not waiting for us to do great things for Him. He is waiting for us to realize how many great things He has made for us. Amen. 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 And uh, John 4, 10 says, Jesus answered to the Samaritan woman, If you had only known and had recognized God's gift and who this is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked Him, instead and he would have given you living water so what is jesus trying to tell to the samaritan woman the only thing you need the only thing you need is your spiritual eyes to be open so you may recognize who am i i'm the source of life i'm 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 ready to give you something it's not about you giving me it's about what i am ready to give you and that's our life, usually, you know, with, with dealing with the Lord. He wants to take us and to bring us to that place where we would receive by revelation and recognize God's gift, who, uh, uh, which He has prepared and, and, and is ready to give us. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, that, that's an amazing picture. When Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says, immediately the veil which was separating the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple and, and the nation, you know, like a barrier, was torn apart from the top to the bottom. That, that's interesting terminology because it, 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 it represents divine intervention, that it was not a human power, human intention or anything like that because it was from the top to the bottom from above 
which means no matter how high uh, and tall this veil was, God intervened, heavenly action, uh, you know, was released and it was torn apart in two and the way to the sanctuary was immediately open. You see, that happened after Jesus died on the cross. It means he covered everything and every requirement, every requirement was met in him for you to be enabled to meet the Lord, to be restored into that fellowship and to, to be brought, as the apostle says, uh, uh, innocent in joy before his presence. That, that Jude chapter 1 verse 24, to whom who is able to present you blameless before his glory and his throne in joy. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. To him be glory forever and ever. And that's, that's the finished work. You know, the veil is torn apart. The way is open. What can you do to deserve? What, what can you do to please the Lord more than that? You see, in Christ Jesus, you know, everything was finished, accomplished in such a way, such a perfect way that God, God felt pleased with that and satisfied. And he said, enough, it is finished. It is paid. Now you don't have to do anything. Just to praise Him, thank Him, and recognize how great is the victory of Jesus on your behalf. Because the way is open. What is expected from now on uh, from you? Hebrews says, with boldness to approach the throne of grace, which is behind the veil, through the new and living way uh, which He opened through the veil for us and for me and for you on our behalf. Ooh, so that's Christian life. Christian life is recognizing how great the accomplishment, the sacrifice, how great the provision, how great the finished work for us, and just taking it and applying it in our life, and it produces what? It, the result will be what? Praise and worship, because it's not upon you. Everything has been accomplished and done for Him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You see, when Israel traveled in the desert, the Bible says the Ark of the Covenant proceeded ahead of, of, of the, the, the camp, you know, for three days journey ahead of, of, of the camp and the nation moving, you know, they would come to a place they will settle and then the first one to leave is the, 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 the this ministry of the Levites carrying the Ark of the Covenant you know and they would proceed ahead of the whole nation three days distance a journey and the Bible describes it as a uh, 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 to find a, a, an action and activity to find a place for rest isn't that an amazing terminology? Who is providing this place of rest for the nation? It is the Ark of the Covenant and, and the ministry of the priest going ahead of them, looking uh, the, the land and, and led by God. Finally, the Lord has already been there, clean the place, prepare it, you know. So when they come, it is like He has already been there, uh, provided, you know, took care. And you just enter into his provision, which is called, described by the Bible, a place of rest. There is nothing to be done. There is nothing to be accomplished. There is nothing to be, uh, uh, to, to fight against, you know. Uh, uh, he has already taken care. And you see, when you look at the New Testament, let, let's say, uh, uh, sinful nature, uh, God took care of that. Amen. <laughs> Uh, struggles of sin, God took care of that in, in, in the face of Jesus. Sicknesses and, and physical challenges, God took care of that uh, in the face of Jesus. Fellowship with the Lord, uh, enjoying His presence, God took care of that in the face of Jesus. When we arrived and we become born again, New Testament Christians, the body of Christ, do you understand that we, we just enter into the sphere of what He has already provided for us and prepared for us? And the only, uh, how to say, natural response to that is to what? To worship. 
realizing, like the Bible says, when he saw that he had, uh, he, he, he got clean and, and cleansed, the Bible says he, he turned back to Jesus, fell at his knee. And that, that's Christian life, recognizing and our eyes and perceptions of the Spirit being open for what He has provided. That's the beginning, the greatest doorway for your daily victory every day. When you start in the morning, you are appointed first priority, first priority not to recognize what is the challenge, what's the trouble and remember the things of the past. But to, to, to open through the power of the Holy Spirit your perception for the provision of the Lord for the present day. That it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a victorious day. It's going to be a, a, a day of manifesting more of His glory and of His goodness of what He has provided and what He has released you know, on my behalf. As the Bible says in the New Testament. I think it's, it's Peter, Apostle Peter says, for he has provided all things required for life and godliness. That's so beautiful. That's so, so uh, John chapter 1 verse 18, I think, says, uh, uh, and, and we all, no one is excluded, no one is excluded. We all have received from his Fullness, grace upon grace and favor upon favor, the Amplified says. You see, out of His fullness, we have all received what is required for life and godliness. And which is, which, what is the key? What is the doorway? I really believe worship uh, uh, makes you being focused, enables you to gaze upon and being focused on the provision, on the answer, put uh, and, and establishes your spiritual uh, perceptions on what is provided and when you start exercising worship the enemy leaves the clouds get uh, blown away everything and the sun of righteousness shines upon your life full power and now you see the gift you see what you how privileged you are and you see with the eyes of the spirit that it is a done deal it is finished and you have a victory no fear, no anxiety will make it. No complain and murmuring. Those who complain and murmur in, in the desert, they died in the desert and were disabled to enter into the promised land. Was it the Lord being angry and upset? No, it was day on confession, day on murmuring and a distorted focus which uh, 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 prevented them to enter in the promised land. Oh, thank you, Lord. You see, I'm going to give you uh, two examples and I will finish with that. But before to proceed to the, the two greatest examples from the New and, and the Old Testament, I just want to mention something. Which day uh, Adam was created uh, uh, on? Uh, we all know that when Adam was created, uh, every part of, 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 of the world and the creation was already finished and accomplished. So Adam was created on the sixth day as the crown of the creation of God. Amen? Amen. So imagine Adam being created on the sixth day and, 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 and God, God forms him, breathes, breathes the life. Uh, actually, Adam was born on day six, but the first day... The, the, the beginning of his life is on the seventh day. Isn't that right? The first day of his existence. The first day of his new life and existence is day one, is the seventh day of the Lord. Now, what is the seventh day uh, 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 like a specific width? The, the Bible says that it was sanctified. It was not, not like the other days. The other days were a day of creating something. The seventh day was a day of rest. Uh, which means Adam was enjoying, only able to enjoy, not to participate in creation or to do anything, but just only to be a beneficiary of what God has already created for six days. And then when we go to the New Testament uh, book of Hebrews, it says, strive to enter into that rest. Which is that rest? The finished work of Christ. What he has accomplished on our behalf, we are called to strive to enter and participate that rest and to rest from our own works, uh, you know, which were required from the law, 
to, to accomplish something and to do. Actually, this guy, the leper who uh, turned back to Jesus, he, he, he was a Samaritan. He wasn't, uh, uh, how to say, uh, uh, calibrated by the <coughs> law. Because, you know, the other ones, they were Israelites, I mean Jewish people, and they were totally calibrated and formed by the law, uh, consumed by their own performance and their own doing. That's how, that's how they, they, they couldn't return back to Jesus and give him worship, because they were still serving the old system. This guy never been under the law, he was not acquainted with the law, he got direct access to the grace of God, boom, he enters and in, through worshiping he enters into the power of the New Testament and, and, and that's our life that's our picture today how much we must be consumed of course we do a lot of things you know I, I, when I saw the Google uh, uh, records of my traveling my ministry for the last year I was blown away how many places I've been, how many places I have served, how many miles we have traveled. It, it's mind-blowing, like you go, wow, this, this body looks like a bear ring. It doesn't get tired, you know, just rolling around and administering the Lord. Of course we pray, uh, and the first priority for me is to, to share the gospel, to pray. But I, I, I just draw from the internal resources, it's not my doing. I'm just worshiping God through my ministry. I just draw from Him and I just release. I'm like a pipe. You, you see, you cannot do nothing in order to please the Lord. The Lord has already accepted you in the Beloved. And you are already loved with the final measure of love and acceptance. Praise God. From now on, worship is the right response of what He has accomplished and done for you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Just like, yeah, just like Adam being created on the uh, sixth day, the seventh day, he just stares at the stars and the planets and the creation. And wh what is his response? Wow. Wow. Who created that? Wow. My God created that. My creator. And he worships the seventh day. There's nothing to be done on the seventh day, but just being a beneficiary of everything God has appointed him to rule over and to exercise authority. Okay, two examples and I will finish with that and then we'll pray. First of one with the Old Testament. One of the greatest uh, uh, sacrifices ever made, uh, I mean crucial importance in the Old Testament was Abraham compelled by God to, to sacrifice his son Isaac. Mm -hmm. So you know uh, it was a challenge. But the Bible says he didn't hesitate at all. The Bible says immediately the word of God, when the word of God came to him, next day, early in the morning, not at noontime, early in the morning, he's heading toward the mountain God, God showed him. With uh, his servants, with Isaac, and, and, and traveling with donkeys, you know, they, they came to the place on the third day, which is the power of the third day again revealed, talking to Jesus and the sacrifice on the cross. That's another story. So the Bible says when they came, now listen to this, when they came to the mountain appointed for sacrificing Isaac, you know, he turns to his servants and he goes like, you and the donkey, you stay here. Me and my son, we will go up on the mountain top. And now listen to the terminology he is using. He doesn't say to sacrifice. He doesn't say me to pay the price, me to, to be uh, put under that great responsibility of obedience and uh, uh, being deprived of my best. No, what he says, learn from Abraham, what he says, he goes like, we will go uh, up on the mountaintop to worship. Me and my son, we will worship. And now, there is something very important. Servants, and the donkey, which is a beast of a, uh, carrying a burden, he commands them. He doesn't uh, allow them to participate in that act of worship. He says, you stay here. Me and my son, we will go up to worship. Which means that that servant mentality, that, 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 that servant's attitude, uh, slavery, is not allowed to participate in the act of worship, 
because in the act of worship there is no slavery. Actually, the New Testament teaches us that uh, 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 the, 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 the servant doesn't remain in the house forever but the son. And the New Testament is, teaches us that we are not servants anymore. We are sons and daughters and we are heirs and co-heirs with Christ. That's another long story, you know. But of course we serve, but we serve as cooperating, as ruling together, as exercising the greatest uh, 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 power and authority in the face of what we are crowned with in, in, in Christ Jesus. You see? And it's far from serving us under the, the, the burden of the law. So uh, the, the servants and the donkey, they remain uh, in the skirts of the mountain. And, and Abraham and Isaac, they go up on the hill. Now, during the process of the journey, Isaac is realizing that something is missing. He turns to his father and he says, Father, and he, he says, he and my son. And he goes like, okay, usually that's the way we are practicing that. We have a fire, wood, and sacrifice, an altar. I don't see, I don't see the sacrifice. What are we supposed to sacrifice on that, that altar? Then listen and learn wisdom from Abraham. He turns to his son and he goes like, my son, God will provide himself the, sacrifice, the sacrificial lamb. Wow, that's faith. That's, that's, that's something like exercising dependence. You see, he doesn't say, don't ask me. Don't even ask me. It's the worst day of my life. I'm supposed to give my best and, and to be deprived of my only son, but I have to please the Lord. No, he goes like, we are going to worship what God has already provided for us. Isn't that amazing? They claim, climb the mountain. He goes there. He, he, he lays Isaac on the altar. He, he goes after the obedience. Suddenly the angel of the Lord cries out, Stop right there. Now I know. Now turn and see. And they, they turn and they see in the, the, the thorny bush there is a ram caught by the horns, you know, ready and prepared to be sacrificed on that altar. You see, worship always opens the door for the provision of God in your life. If you climb your challenges, the mountain of your challenges, not as a servant, as a donkey under burden, but as a believer of the finished work of Christ worshiping, there is a there is provision for, your, for, for every aspect of your life. And, and let me go to the New Testament. You know, for me, the greatest victory of Jesus manifested during his ministry here on earth, you know, he accomplished uh, amazing, amazing acts of, of supernatural power put on display. Uh, 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 feeding 5,000 people, uh, cleansing uh, people from their sicknesses, all kinds of sicknesses. He healed them all, uh, forgiving sins, restoring people's bodies, you know. Awesome things. But for me, the greatest victory is victory over death. Because death is described in the Bible, in the New Testament, as the greatest enemy and the last enemy. Mm -hmm. So, for me, the, the, the Jesus says victory over death is a manifestation of the highest uh, uh, level of, of victory in his life. And definitely in, in the uh, story of resurrecting Lazarus. Because when he went to resurrect Lazarus, it wasn't just like Lazarus dead for a few hours, or, like, or even 10 hours, 15 hours, then that's a lot, don't you think so? When he arrived, the Bible says his body, the body of the dead, was already uh, decomposing, you know. Uh, I remember Jonathan uh, yesterday, uh, it took us such a long time to go to that restaurant and to find it. And, and he goes like, wow, I feel like I am dissolving, you know, like my body is dissolving from hunger. And imagine Lazarus for five days uh, in the grave, but his body was decomposing, you know, no, no, no power to hold it together. He was totally falling apart and stinking. And then Jesus stands before the greatest challenge uh, 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 as the Son of Man, a human here on earth, has ever faced. And, and he goes like, uh, that's totally amazing. Instead of 
whatever else, you know, first priority. Do you remember what Jesus did? The Bible says he lifted up his head and his eyes <coughs> towards heaven. And that, that, that mighty uh, uh, premiere of Lazarus' resurrection started with that, 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 that amazing declaration. Father, thank you that you have heard me. Already finished, done. When? When all that happened? Not at the grave. The Bible says before the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God was slain. You know, you see, when we arrived at the face of our challenges and troubles and limitations, do you know that God has already been there in the face of Christ Jesus? And that our greatest outcome, uh, the, the outcome of our victory would be a result of just lifting your eyes, not toward your challenge, but toward heaven, toward God. And just thinking, Father, thank you that you have heard me already in Christ Jesus crying out on the cross why you have forsaken me on my behalf. So he will be forever with you. Thank you for providing. Thank you for, for taking care. Cast all your cares, the Bible says, upon him. All your burdens, all your cares, cast, him, cast them upon him because he cares for you. Oh, wow, Jesus bore that burden of the cross. He fell under the power because there was none to help, you know, uh, as, as, as carrying your image. My personal understanding is the Son of Man, Jesus, fell under the, 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 the weight of the cross, not because he was not able as in his divinity to, to bore that cross, but he bore that cross, taking upon himself mine and your weaknesses under the burden of sin you know we are constantly stumbling and falling down but jesus bore that cross that 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 stumbling image for you and for me so we may have victory in his name mm -hmm. father thank you that you have heard me lazarus then he said lazarus come out now you prophesy in your life through worship because who glory jesus <laughs> Folks, this is not an information. This is a divine impartation of the Holy Spirit into our lives. When you turn to your challenges and you start worshiping the answer already provided, God's care already being uh, taken uh, took care, taking care of all those uh, expectations, you know, then you prophesy over, uh, I'm healed by his stripes. I, I, I can do all things through, through the power and Christ strengthening me. It is totally amazing what, what worship introduces in your life. Worship is not singing songs. Worship is singing songs of victories and songs of uh, 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 magnifying not our problems, but his greatness and his majesty and his power in our life, how great he is. And, she, and, and the Bible says, Lazarus come out, the Bible says, the dead came out. That, that's an interesting terminology. It doesn't say the resurrected one came out. No, the Bible says the dead came out, wrapped into the, you know, linen clothes or, or, or whatever. Ooh, thank you, Lord. When you worship, when you praise, and when you thank Him, and then you prophesy, you know what? The dead situation, the, the impossible situation, whatever it is, like it looks, you know, get shifted and changed and empowered by the, 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 the power of God, and it doesn't look anymore the same. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it is just ready to be released into your life. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for this special time, a holy ground we are standing. It is holy ground because your word is holy, because the Spirit of the Lord who is ministering to us is holy, because your presence is holy, which means making us separate, making us put aside from everything the world is busy with, we get busy with you, our hearts and everything. And I bless you people, I bless this ministry right now. And I release the power of the Holy Spirit to empower them to go and face with joy and laughter every limitation in their life which 
the enemy tries to stop them and stop them and prevent them from advancing. 2020 is the year of your advancing in the perfect will of God for yes, you yes, and yes. everything He has prepared for you. Who for the, His praises and the praises of His glory? The enemy won't be able to prevent you and stop you uh, advancing when you learn how to worship the beauty of His holiness and the majesty of His power in the face of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, your journey, your journey ends in heaven and heaven will unfold the full power and you will spend eternity singing a song which says, Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb to receive power, glory, honor, forever and ever. You see, who is worthy in your life to be praised? Is it the challenge? In, when we go to heaven, no death, no sickness, no giant, no devil, no demon, no lack will be able to stand beside him equally with him. Worthy is the Lamb who has overcome the Lion of Judah. Yeah. Learn from the Holy Spirit in the Word of God. Learn to carry and, 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 and steward a heart of a worshiper because worship is the highest form of a Christian life, you know, and, and, and manifest the highest manifestation of the power of your Christian life being empowered by God. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much, Amen. God. Thank you. Thank you so much for this great privilege. <laughs> we love you. Thank you, Lord. you know, this crime, you remind me of a story with, um, you remember Hurricane Harvey? Mm -hmm. Hurricane Harvey has happened a few years ago, and it's still, still kind of bright in my mind. Our entire neighborhood was flooding. We're, we're, in, we're surrounded by an area that's one, one of the lowest laying areas that everyone knows, Maryland and Westbury and Bel Air was flooded multiple times over the last few years. We're freaking out. Everything around us is flooding. I'm out there staring at my truck as the waters are coming up, about to enter my garage, and a house is about to be overtaken. Olivia saw anxiety and everything on me. She came, she came in here and started praising and worshiping. Mm -hmm. That very moment, God said, Jonathan, go inside and lay down and go to bed. I really believe that had she not been praising and worshiping at that time, I may not have had the peace to hear the voice of God command me to lay down and rest. And in that, we're, we had the news on 24 hours a day during that time. A donut hole formed around our area. <laughs> it was bright red and yellow all around us, and some areas were purple, and we were sitting in a donut hole. <coughs> the rain stopped in our area. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, I didn't get a chance to finish the offering, so if you all please <coughs> want to sow into these, this amazing ministry and these amazing Thank people, you. please sow into them. Um, we're, we're going to bless them after this as well. And thank you all, everyone who's online. If you want to bless them, you can just go to godmanifest.com forward slash donate and just uh, just donate and designate it before MidCon Albina and we'll get it to them. Um, and then we're, we're just going to, we're going to, I have it all queued up right now called Heavenly Atmospheres from Ben and Jody Hughes. We're going to play that. It's, it's lasts about 10 minutes and 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. We're just going to start praying in. And then we're going to lay hands on the, the meat troughs and bless them. They have merchandise in the back. Um, if you all want to buy some merchandise for yourself or for others, buy them, bless them. I guarantee you, you're going to be blessed and your socks are going to fall off. So God bless everyone who's online. Thank you all very much for, for tuning in. We love you all.